Hi folks, Phil Davidowski here of the Ithaca College Department of Physics. It was sitting in this chair as an undergraduate student that I first found a compelling video which challenged my understanding of the physical world. The video is, is of the late Eric Lathwaite, a former professor of heavy electrical engineering at Imperial College in London. And in the video he shows a 40 pound wheel, precessing like a top. And while it does this, he claims that it becomes light as a feather and he can lift it over his head with one hand with almost no effort. The following is a short clip of the video, and if you want to see the whole thing, click on the link in the comments. This is an experiment with a spinning wheel, a rather large wheel, 13 inches diameter, mounted in a ball bearing on a shaft three feet long. I am going to hold it like this and swing it in a circle and lift it with one hand, but only when it's spinning. First of all, let me weigh it to show you just how heavy it is. As I talk, you'll see that lifting it is quite an effort. It weighs about 40 pounds, and I can't lift it any higher than that without a lot of strain. So now we'll spin it up to two and a half thousand revs a minute, at which point it becomes a live thing. So here goes 40 pounds of wheel as light as a feather. This is not a conjuring trick, this is a fact of science. Watch it again carefully. A fact about a spinning wheel is so far everyone has missed. So I did what any scientist would do. I went about developing an experiment to test what I had seen. I didn't have a lifting apparatus lying around the lab that I could use to measure the weight of the gyroscope during the experiment. So instead, I built one in the Ithaca College machine shop. I'd like to point out a few of the features. First, there are four sensors that I can suspend the gyroscope from in order to measure its weight. This is important so that it's not a human claiming that it feels heavier or lighter. Second, just like in the video, I can lift the gyroscope during its precession using this cordless drill. And third, other than operating the drill, this removes the human element from the experiment. But we still want to be sure that we have an appropriate analog for this experiment. Now here you could see Eric Lathwaite standing with his huge gyroscope. Now he's supporting it with his hands. Instead of a human, we want to use a mechanical lift, and we're going to be supporting the gyroscope with support strings and force sensors. Now, we also don't want to be using such a large gyroscope. 40 pounds is a lot, and we can do this on a much smaller scale. So instead, we're going to use a small laboratory gyroscope. Even though this setup looks different, it's still going to be the same experience as in Lathwaite's video. Now, the experiment itself is very simple. I've already weighed the gyroscope at rest to get a baseline. Now I'm going to spin it up and I'm going to weigh it at three different intervals. Now the gyroscope is almost up to speed. I spin it using a small battery powered electric motor and I've set the two force sensors to take continuous measurements from here on out. This way I can run the experiment in stages without having to stop. Now I want to do it in stages so that I can tell what factors, if any, are causing a change in the weight of the gyroscope. So the first stage is very simple. It's a gyroscope with a spinning rotor, but not precessing. This is to tell whether or not the spin of the rotor is causing the weight change. For the second stage, I want to weigh the gyroscope while it's precessing. To make it precess, I'm going to burn away the support string of the main body. Now you're going to see the gyroscope wobble a little bit but that's because it has to fall a short distance in order for precession to start. The final stage of the experiment is to lift it the same way Eric Lathwaite did in his video. Now all that's left to do is for me to run the experiment many times and then analyze all the data I collect. So what happened? 
Well, the experiment was a success, but it didn't support Lathwaite's claims. You can see the data here that I gathered from the force sensors. The y-axis is the force that was measured, and the x-axis is time. Now the first thing you'll notice is that the forces measured were negative. Now this is simply because the force sensors are designed to measure both pushes and pulls, and the way they were built, a pull registers as a negative force. So if we look at the data, the red line is sensor 1, and that was supporting the extension rod. The green data, sensor 2, was supporting the main body. So you'll see, around 12 seconds, the force for sensor 2 goes to zero. Now that makes sense, because if we recall the experiment, I burned away the supporting string for that sensor. Of course, after that, it's going to read zero newtons. Now, I've included the bottom graph, the sum of the two force sensors, because that shows the total weight of the gyroscope at any of our three stages, marked out here. So if we examine the linear fit, once we consider the uncertainty, the slope is zero, meaning the weight of the gyroscope didn't change at all throughout the experiment. Therefore, we can conclude that Lathwaite's claim was just a myth. Thank you very much for watching.